So now that we've gone over most of the basics, let's go back to the screens tab with a new project and look at a different type of show setup using another type of screen object from our library, LEDs. First, we'll take a look at how we build LEDs in the Screens tab. Then we'll move into the Mapping tab to look at a different way to assign outputs and dive further into the LED mapping workspace in order to break up our LEDs so all of the screens can fit on one output. Let's jump in. Alrighty, so we have a new project here, and the first thing we need to do is bring in a screen object. And we're going to do that by going to our library and navigating to our LED panels. I can twirl this down and we've got all kinds of manufacturers here that we can pick from. Uh, each manufacturer has quite a few options in it. Uh, we can go to our friends over at Row. They've got quite a few panels, obviously. Um, you can also click in this search bar up here. So if I wanted to go grab some BP2s, I could do that. And I'm just going to click and drag from the library into my workspace. Now, if we have a panel that is not in the library, we can actually search for generic and there's a generic LED panel. And when I click on that screen object in my inspector over here down in the specifications, I can actually create my own panel. So I could put in the resolution, I could put in the panel size and I can do a bunch of other things here as well. Fortunately, we're going to pretend like we have some BP2s that we need to set up. And if we look at the specifications there, we can see all that information is already filled in for us. So we have panel resolution 176 by 176. These panels are a half meter by a half meter. And we've got two columns of these panels on our stage. So let's take a look at what that might look like to build in our inspector we have underneath our name and color and above our canvas resolution, we have the panel array. Now this tool will let us type in some numbers here and I could say two in horizontal and eight in vertical. And that's going to actually build out our led array for us. We can see that our canvas resolution is automatically adjusted to 352 by 1408. Now I'm going to rename this, call this stage right column. And I can control C and control V to copy and paste. And I'll use my snapping tools and let's just place these one meter apart. I can group select them, center them up. So that way they're exactly centered. And let's call this one stage left column. Now, another neat thing we can do here is we can use our workspace toolbar and I'll turn on this show labels so we can see what each of these columns are named and what the resolution is. I'll go ahead and change the colors on them too, just to something that helps me remember which one is which. And that's pretty much all we're going to do in the screens tab. Let's move on to mapping next. Let's talk about how we're going to assign our output to these two columns. Instead of using something like IO routing, we can actually jump to our mapping live tab. And here, if I twirl down my local machine here, we can see I've got all of my outputs. I've got a couple of different GPUs in my system, but I know that this one is where the output that I want to use is. Let's go ahead and I'm going to use my identify output button. And let's go ahead and pull up that screen. And we can see that my output is on graphics card one output five. Now, if I want, I can actually click and drag these outputs onto these screen objects in order to assign them. The way I'm going to do that is I'm first going to go up here to my selection mode, which we've talked about before. And here I'm going to change it to screens. And this means any screen object we made in the screens tab. So if I change my selection mode to screens or I can use hotkey F4 as with any selection mode. And now I can actually take output five and I can click and drag it. And as soon as I hover over this screen object, it highlights. 
And I'll go ahead and let go. We can see that output five has been connected to the stage right column. I can do that for the stage left column as well. And now if I turn off my output identification and activate my outputs or hit F5 and then turn on my test pattern, we can see we've got something showing up on our output. But it looks like two things are happening. First, part of our screen is off of our output here. So we're actually missing a couple tiles at the bottom. And secondly, it looks like one of our columns is actually underneath our other one. It looks like our stage right column is underneath. Let's see if we can fix that. So the way that we're going to solve this problem is using our output mapping workspace. And because it's a workspace, you guessed it, it's something that's going to appear in the center here. And the way we're going to access that is in the top left corner, we can actually dive in in the mapping tab. And in this case, we can pick which screen object we want to dive into. So I'm going to dive into the stage right column. We get a little bit different view here. And if I click on this feed, we can see that my inspector changes and brings up this mapping feed rectangle. And here what we have is essentially a view of our source or where we want to sample content from and our destination or where we want to send it to on the output. And we can see that that lines up with these parameters here. So we have a source and we have a destination. We can access this feed by going to the project tab over in our library and I can twirl down mappings, stage right column, mapping, and this is where we can actually access this feed. This project tab becomes really important as we start to add more feeds and have more complicated screen objects. So make sure you remember that it's here to access. So we're going to take this feed and we actually need to move it around on our destination so that we can see one column here and another column maybe here on our output. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to move my position of my destination because I want to move this column out from underneath. And so I can just go into my X parameter here and I can just start moving it and we can see that that column starts to move. Now, if I wanted, I could input an exact value here. So for example, these columns are 352 pixels wide. So if I type in 352, it'll slot up right next to the other column. And the reason it's 352 and not 353 is because in video processing, we always start at 00 in the top left corner. So 0 to 351 is 352 pixels, which means that our next uh, column here could start at 352. So that solves part of our problem, but you can see here that we've still got a couple of uh, panels that aren't quite in our output. And this workspace here, you can always kind of resize it, make it a little bigger. So I could zoom in here. I can pan again. That's just using the regular workspace controls and we can see we cut off halfway through the seventh panel. You can't send half of a signal to a LED panel. That's not how LED panels work. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another feed to capture these bottom four panels and then we're going to capture that as a source. And as a, in our destination, we'll move them over to here. So let's show you how that's done. The first thing I'm going to do is take my feed that I already have, and we actually need to lose these two panels off of it. And the way that I'm going to do that is in my source. I can go to my size and I can say, I actually only want this to be 176, which is the size of each panel times six panels. That's going to get me exactly the size of those six panels. We can then add a plus button, which will add a second feed. 
and you can see that our stage right column is now back on top here on the very far left of our output. So let's grab that other feed and I can do that by clicking in the project tab or I could click on that nameplate. And we're going to change the size to be instead of width and height being 352 by 1408, I'm actually going to change this to be 176 times 2. And that's going to grab a smaller section, a 2 by 2 section of these panels. And now I can either move the position, and in this case I want the Y, or I could even just grab it in my workspace and use my snapping tools to bring it all the way down here so we're grabbing those last four panels. So now I have everything in my source, but I need to move them in my destination. So we're just going to go down here to destination and I'm just going to move that over. I could even do 352 times two, which will line it up right at the edge there. Let's go ahead and do that process with our other column. Select the feed change my source height to be 176 times 6, add a new feed, select that feed, change the source size to be 176 times 2, change the source position, and then change the destination. Now I'll show you one other thing we can do on the destination here. You can actually grab this in the workspace as well and our same snapping rules apply so i'll just move that right to there and would you look at that looks like our output is looking pretty good i'm going to quickly jump over to the compositing tab and just drop a little bit of content onto one of these play the timeline and let's just grab the sizing and scale it way up we still aren't seeing any content here, and that's because our test pattern is still on. So if I just turn that off, there we go. We now have our content playing out. And if I hit play, you can see that content playing back. Now, it looks really broken up on our output over here, but if we've communicated with our LED team correctly, then the LED processor will go ahead and stitch all this back together so it looks appropriate on our LED wall, and we should be seeing this in front of us. Let's look at a more complicated LED project. Here we've got a stage set up, and I've got a screenshot with our LED layouts and the panels that we're using, which are row MC12Fs with various vertical and horizontal counts. We're using this panel specifically because it'll allow us to fit all of these screen objects on one 1920 by 1080 output. Here's what that project file looks like, and you'll be able to download this project file from the YouTube description or from our help juice page. Starting from a blank show file here, let's go search for those panels, the MC-12F, and I'll bring one of those in, and let's do the 5 by 20 zoom out a little bit, and we'll rename this wing LED stage right. And I'm just going to color this some color to make it easy to remember. I'll copy and paste this. Rename this one wing LED stage left. Make this some other color. We'll bring in one more and let's make this one the 28 by 11. And this will be our main LED. And I can bring that and I'll use my snapping tools to center that up. And now I can kind of start making this a little cleaner, a little neater. And we'll bring in one more. And this one will be our drum riser at 15 by six. Make is some other color as well. And that's all we're going to do in the screens tab. So now we're going to move over to the mapping tab. 
and we're going to jump to our live and go assign our outputs. I already know that this is hooked up to output five based on the last project we did. So I'm just going to click and we can assign these to multiple screen objects like we saw before. I'll grab one and dive in. And here we'll go ahead and start resizing these and I'll go and turn on my test pattern so I can see them over in my destination screen. And this stage right one is good, but let's go look at our stage left. I'll move that over to here. And we'll grab the main. Move that over a little bit. And then we'll jump to the drum. Notice I'm selecting the feed before I can actually move anything over in my destination window and I could be using my source and destination parameters here I'm just choosing to do it uh, in my destination window just a little easier for me and let's go ahead and activate that output and there we go now, before we add any content to our timeline here, I want to go show you a cool feature with LEDs in the settings. In test patterns, if we twirl down LED, we actually can create different LED or custom LED patterns that will generate when we click on that test pattern button. So one thing I could do is click on the checkerboard and you'll see that we get a background one in a background two color. And you could change those. You could choose a custom color. You can also choose the color of the lines if you want. And if I hit update test pattern to all screens, you can see that the test patterns will automatically get updated and appear on our output over here. If we go back to the compositing tab, I can click on this test pattern. We can see we still get those. But if we would like to, for example, make a grids timeline here, we actually have a folder called test patterns where those test patterns are dropped by default and you can then use them as pieces of content on your timeline. So I could make a queue here. I could call that queue grids test. And now I could actually drop each of these on here. And I don't see any content because I haven't hit play or turned off my test patterns. So let's do that, hit play. And now we can see that our uh, output over here is showing basically the same thing as our test pattern button. It's just now showing via the timeline instead of via the test pattern.